Hello, welcome everyone. This is actually the last episode of season two of the uh, Virtual Ninja Show. And this one is a special one. I have a lot of guests with me. We are talking about MVPs, what it is, how to become one, what they're doing, all of these things. And because I can't answer all these questions alone, I have a lot of people with me. Before we get there, Don't forget to go to aka.ms slash ninja show. You can watch all the past episodes um, as well as we will be back with season three at some point. And then, of course, sign up for the future episodes. And now let's start. I don't even know where to start. I will say, Katie, what are you doing? Who are you? Explain a little bit about yourself, please. Thank you, Heike. Um, so my name is Katie Rickman. And I am running one of our private communities, which is the Microsoft 365 Defender Customer Connection Program, or CCP. And I am super excited to be here today because MVPs actually are one of our heaviest contributors in our private communities. And we get a lot of two-way dialogue going there. And it's a great way for us to learn from your experiences, your customers' experiences, to help us build better products. Um, so... That's who I am and why I'm so interested in helping to uh, support the MVP community. Thank you so much. And we will get a little bit deeper later into this topic as well. So then next, I'm just throwing names. Ben. Hey, hi there. Uh, so yeah, Ben, I'm a PM on the Microsoft Defender for Office 365 team. Uh, you may remember me from the phishing episode I've been with Hiker recently. Um, so yeah, most people should know me already. Thank you so much. And then Urja. Thanks, Heike. Hi, everyone. I'm Urja Gandhi, and I am a product manager on Microsoft Defender for Office 365 team. Um, I also lead uh, engagements between MVPs, uh, the MVP community, and uh, the product group at MDO, and I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much. So now we are getting to MVPs. So I think the first one I'm calling is Joe, please. Hi, um, my name is Joe Stalker, and I'm a three-time MVP uh, with a focus in security, um, particularly in identity and the Defender product line. Uh, very nice to be with you all. I, I also uh, run a small Microsoft uh, security consulting company called Patriot. Thank you so much for being on the show. And then last but not least, um, I would say Fabian. Is it Fabian? How would you like me Fabian to pronounce it? Fabian is perfect. <laughs> Fabian. Yeah, hi, I'm Fabian Bader from Hamburg, Germany. I'm also a Microsoft MVP in the cloud and data center management category. And I'm a brand new MVP since May in 2022. So very excited to be here today. Congratulations. So um, now we heard a lot MVP. What is it? Urja, I will throw that question to you. What are MVPs? We heard about some categories, um, award categories. Tell us a little bit about the program, please. So MVP is Microsoft's most valuable professional. These are experts of Microsoft technologies and products who basically showcase their passion, uh, you know, share their knowledge, and most importantly, uh, for their community spirit and leadership, they receive an award and they're nominated by uh, folks who see them as the experts of uh, Microsoft products and services. Uh, globally, we have around 4,000 MVPs. You will see these people contribute code to GitHub projects or share their knowledge within the community through content that they write, such as blogs or books or articles, so even podcasts and Also, some of them are speakers at conferences and events. What's very impressive is uh, some even do live stream coding. When I build products and I write a blog, of course, I'm going to mention good things about it in my blog because I don't want customers to miss out. But when an MVP writes a blog or content about features that they use, uh, that's where it's really impactful because customers follow the recommendations, look up to MVPs. And uh, also, it's not only that, but also, you know, feedback uh, to Microsoft that really helps us understand how they are using our products as well. Speaking about 
the MVP award structure, we have about 14 award categories. To name a few, there is Microsoft Azure, there is IoT, Internet of Things, there is cloud and data center management, then there is enterprise mobility and security. And within the security award category, there are a contribution areas, which every award category has. There are total three contribution areas within the security award category. Uh, number one is cloud security. Number two is identity and access. And number three is SIEM and XDR, which stands for security information and event management and extended detection and response. So, um, like if if I like what you're doing, can I just nominate you and then you get awarded or how does that work? A great question, Haika. So no, the nominations uh, cannot be done to Microsoft employees. MVPs are non-Microsoft external em uh, employees and uh, a particular Microsoft full-time employee can nominate someone to be an MVP or an existing current actively current active MVP can nominate somebody else to become an MVP. So Joe, um, I'm asking you now as a three-time awarded MVP, I think you mentioned, how was your journey? How did you become an MVP? What did you do at this time to become an MVP? And what has changed since then? So it's been an interesting journey. Uh, about 14 years ago, as a consultant working for a consulting organization, I first heard about the MVP program and I was nominated by another MVP and uh, didn't make it. I was nominated uh, over a series of years. And so I immediately had respect because I, I realized that just getting nominated doesn't really mean you'll become an MVP. So prior to that, I had really been focused on writing blogs and other technical art articles, but it wasn't really until I started really mentoring others uh, that I had become an MVP. And so uh, that was one of the biggest things I would say, you know, for anyone that's really interested in becoming an MVP is try to be well-rounded. And uh, instead of just focusing on one particular thing like writing, uh, you know, really try to diversify and and mentor or um, you know, speak and, and try to do as many things you can for the community as possible. So I volunteered at the Microsoft Software and System Academy, which helps veterans transition from military life into uh, civilian life. And so I'd meet with individuals and mentor them and really help them with that. I wrote a book, um, Securing Microsoft 365, and have been very active in, in blogging and writing. And I also had the opportunity of speaking at the Ignite conference this year and other conferences uh, so those activities really helped. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Fabian, so you are a newly awarded MVP. How was it for you? So actually, um, a little bit like for Joe. So the first time I've been nominated in 2018, I didn't make it. Um, but I write blogs and I'm active on social media since uh, long before that. And I also um, have the PowerShell community in Hamburg, the user group uh, that I organize and I'm the host of. And uh, I think that's also something that helped in getting the MVP nomination in the end that year, this year. And I think it's about giving to the community, helping others to grow with Microsoft products and in the ecosystem around that. And yeah, I think the most important thing about getting the MVP award is not to run after it, but to do what you like and to be yourself and put you out, put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, good good explanation actually. Um, but um, I when I talk to Ben about the show a little bit. Ben, um, I think you wanted to also really make clear that we are not just looking for experts going level 300 MVPs. There is, yeah. yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit, please? Yeah, of course. So a lot of people see the MVP program and they think, you know, I need to be a, a super deep technical expert, level four, you know, maybe even level 500 in the product. And I really need to be a technical leader. But actually, there's so many different ways to get involved in the MVP program. And your perspective as a newcomer to a product is 
equally as valuable and sometimes even more valuable than someone who's got really, really advanced and, and kind of like historic knowledge in a product. Um, so if you take, for example, I am now suddenly learning how to integrate uh, part of the Defender stack with Sentinel. The first time I do that, if I documented what I did and I blogged about it on something like LinkedIn or I used our tech communities or, you know, there's so many other um, potential platforms you can use, essentially, that don't have to be your own blog. Now, blogging is great and having a blog is great. But if you don't have the capability to do that, it doesn't matter because ultimately, if people find that content and they are in the same situation that you were when you started, that's going to be really useful content for them. So. Um, it's really, really easy to get started, essentially. Yeah, because, you know, there's like a lot of people, they might just start a journey and want to learn and they're looking exactly for this content and can't use the level three, four, 500. Exactly that, yeah. And there's, you know, there's other things like, so as an example, your particular industry, you might have a mailing list that you're all part of. You might have a forum that you're all part of. It could be, again, the tech community, for example, or it could simply be something like you've run an advanced hunting query that really, really helped you out of a sticky situation and helped you pick up some threats inside your organization or um, block some threats from entering your organization or whatever that might be. Share that query. You know, it's it's all about giving back to the community and just being really, really self um, so any way you can do that is really, really super valuable. Uh, and yeah, I guess what I'm saying is there's no barrier to getting started um, at all. So I want to ask the question and I'm just throwing it out and see who wants to take it first. And then um, so why does someone want to become an MVP? Let me start with why this is important, right? Uh, why we are even doing this episode. Um, we all know that we are in the you know, after the pandemic, we all know that we are in a space where the world is shifting, uh, the business nature has changed, and uh, security has become even more important ever since. And we know that there are security champions out there who are basically defending the realm by sharing their knowledge in the SIEM and XDR category. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of folks reached out to us saying, hey, how can I be more active in the community? How can I share my Microsoft product knowledge that I have? Or uh, someone reached out to us saying, hey, is there a forum at Microsoft where I can invite this consultant to come over and speak about uh, the product knowledge that they have on the Microsoft services? And so really, you know, um, it's not only a way for you to learn how to get there, but also I believe that uh, together is really important. So these uh, exceptional individuals who are our MVPs make us help our products better together. And that is why we all are here. And that's why I think it's very important to be an MVP who can uh, be with us, along with us on that product journey together. Because I don't think Microsoft can be successful without such an exceptional uh, community of MVPs. I understand why we want them. So now let's ask me the question, Fabian or Joe, both, you can both answer. Let's start with Fabian. Why did you want to become an MVP? So first of all, the MVP award is a big honor to receive. Uh, that's something that's really cool. But... Um, that's not why I did it. So most of my work I do for like speaking and doing community contributions is because I want to share my knowledge and put stuff out there that helps other people. And of course, getting the MVP award is a great perk and it comes with additional perks in it. So having access to NDA content, the product group, um, interactions, all that stuff, it's really, really helpful and it gets you going even further than you had the chance before. Um, but I think the most important thing is that you have to uh, have a passion to share your knowledge with others. So it was mainly for both of you, really the recognition to be awarded. It's as Urja mentioned, I think we have 4,000, um, if I'm correctly. So it's not a huge number. And it's, um, of course, makes you feel very proud, which you should be. Um, but then you were also mentioning uh, it comes with a couple of perks. So I would like to talk to Katie, who runs, as she mentioned, our CCP community. Um, and you mentioned, Katie, that 
that MVPs contribute a lot, but you also give them a lot back. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, definitely. So CCP, uh, standing for the Customer Connection Program, um, there's a few of those out there, but the one that I lead is specific to the M365 Defender world. Um, and what's great about this is, as you hear, you know, Joe and Fabian talk about their their passion for what they do and helping others. This is another great way to get involved in helping us uh, help make better products for you and for your customers. So what this community does is provides a direct connection between our engineering teams and our customers, partners, and MVPs that are all under NDA or have a non-disclosure agreement with Microsoft. Um, and what we're looking for there is feedback on your experiences in using the product, your experiences in selling the product, positioning the product, um, and recommendations for what we should be doing differently to make life easier for, for you and your customers, right? And so we're looking for that across um, uh, the, the entire kind of security community of users. Um, but what we're also providing back is one, we're listening and taking in the feedback so that we can make the changes that are important to you. But then we're also giving you early access to what's coming down the pike. So we have a lot of different ways that we engage with the community members, such as community calls that we run roughly once a month or once a week, actually, at this point. Um, and that's talking about what is the roadmap? What are we planning to do? You know, getting feedback from you guys on are we on the right path or not? What would you like to see differently um, for the next semester of planning, for example? Uh, we have constant surveys that go out to the community to understand, hey, here's the, the list of features that we're thinking about prioritizing. Help us understand what, you know, how should we prioritize them? How should we spend our time and our money? Um, we also have one thing that's specific to MVPs is MVP focus groups. Um, and those have been great in early kind of research and planning of the product prior to real development um, to understand, you know, what do you guys think? What's kind of using you as your voice of the customer? Um, how should we make some changes? You guys are, you know, incredibly deep in, uh, in your areas of expertise. And so it's great to hear from you and then build around what you feel would be best. Um, another thing in the community is uh, we actually have a private chat channel just for MVPs where we can do, you know, peer to peer kind of communication there. But also when we do have the engagements that are MVP specific, then we'll post those in the MVP chat uh, to share with you guys. Um, so there's there's a lot of things that we're doing to to drive engagement on the recognition piece. Um, uh, there's also something that we're going to be rolling out next month in our community. Some of the other communities already have, which is uh, digital badging. Um, so for those folks that are more active and engaged in the community and providing feedback, then we'll have some badging that we'll be uh, providing and creating kind of an influencer uh, ring of folks uh, that are uh, engaging quite a bit, um, say more than the others in the communities. Um, and one thing that is probably kind of the, the bigger benefit uh, is private previews. So the engineering team runs a lot of our private previews through this private community. And so you'll get access to you know, hearing the private previews are coming, being able to test them in your tenants to understand, you know, what it is that those updates mean for you and for your customers um, and getting that early access there um, and being able to give us your feedback on what you'd like to see different so that when it does actually hit GA, that we can actually make the tweaks that would be most helpful for you. Um, so a couple of quick examples on the private preview side, actually both of which Fabian was um, a part of. We had one private preview that he had helped us to test that we found out that the alerts weren't actually working or rendering as we had hoped they would. And so with his help, we've actually kind of gone back to the drawing board before releasing to GA to be able to rework how those alerts uh, would be showing to the end customer. Um, and the other one, which was the um, Defender for Cloud uh, Security Admin Experiences, 
that we're moving into Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, that was one where it actually worked as was expected. Fabian and others were able to provide some additional insights into how they use it, what else they'd like to see. And now that has actually gone to GA. So, you know, great examples of how our MVPs and others in the community have helped, but kind of an added benefit for how we engage with our MVPs specifically within those communities too. So quick reminder, I think MVP nominations are twice a year. So if I'm remembering correctly, it's in July and in October. Is this still correct? I think it's now um, all year long. So you can get the MVP award uh, each month. Oh. Um, but the final renewal, if you got your MVP, it's always on the 1st of uh, July, if I'm correct. Joe, that's something you might know better than me. Yes, that's right. Another thing to take into consideration is that Microsoft's looking for your last 12 months of contributions. So you could have really done something amazing. Like two years ago, you wrote a book or spoke at a big conference. Uh, well, that actually won't be taken into consideration for the MVP award. Uh, it needs to be uh, contributions that you've done in the next in the last 12 months. The other thing um, to keep in mind is once you receive the award, it's not an award for life. Uh, it gets reevaluated every year. And so if you stopped contributing, uh, there's no expectation that you would continue to receive that award. Uh, so it, you, you know, it could be a one and done and then, and then that's over. Uh, but if you really love helping others and, and contributing, uh, just be prepared to spend two to four hours a week helping others and, and sharing feedback with Microsoft and, Your mileage will vary. Some people will spend more or less, but but that is an expectation, uh, you know, when you become an MVP. Thank you. And I think it's actually fair, right? So because um, otherwise you have 20, 30,000 MVPs, some of them are not doing anything anymore and still have the status. So I think it's a, it's a good process. Um, we also have an MVP summit. I remember the days when it was in person and I met all these amazing MVPs and we sat in uh, conference rooms and were listening to the product group talking about something they want to do and get the feedback. Um, most of it moved to virtual as well. And um, there was an MVP summit not too long ago. Did you both attend Fabian and Joe? So I missed it like two months. I think it was in um, March and uh, yeah, like in May, I started to get my MVP recognition. So I couldn't make it last uh, this year, but I hope to get there next year and I hope to have it in person. <laughs> yeah. And it was like not so long ago. It's like, wow, March. So <laughs> yes, the, 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 the year flew away. Um, how was it for you, Joe? Did you get a lot of it, a lot out of it? How was your experience with the MVP summit? Yeah. So for me, I was a, what they call a COVID MVP where my work uh, was recognized for the work I had done in 2019. I received recognition in 2020. So there was no uh, initial MVP summit in person there. I've been able to attend the remote uh, summit and it was really an incredible experience. Uh, you know, the feedback I would share is that Uh, some MVPs would love to be able to, to attend in person. Others would like to be remote. And so really to cater to both uh, needs, I would say, you know, just to look into maybe a hybrid model uh, where the next MVP summit uh, can be offered uh, to give both options. Katie will take this feedback. <laughs> I, I agreed. The feedback is very much heard by a lot of the MVPs and we are doing what we can with what we have. Hopefully you'll hear more in the next couple of weeks on the upcoming MVP summit. Um, but we have definitely heard loud and clear that the, the request w is out there for hybrid um, so that we can get at least some folks in person that would like to come in person. So, um, We heard already there's a lot of feedback that the product group gets from MVP. So it's a huge value, of course. Of course, for the MVPs, it's the value. They have a direct connection to engineering. Um, they get under NDA information, early previews. They can contribute, of course, the award. Um, 
there's also, I think, would uh, Ben, you both, you work together with Joe on a, is it a blog post? Is it a video? Is it a, what is it? Tell me, you, I forgot. Yeah. So, um, for example, one of the things me and Joe have recently been working on is an area I'm focused in, uh, improving in Defender for Office 365. I've actually been sharing with Joe the mocks that we're building before they've even gone to the design stage, before they've even gone to our engineering teams to build, like from the very ground and the very inception joe's there straight there with feedback around you know from a customer perspective what what would be useful wouldn't be so useful what would be really impactful um so even just at a product level there's tons and tons of value that we're getting um straight away and one other little uh kind of course bonus piece you get is potentially a guest on the uh on the ninja show as well but i'll hand over to uja for the rest Yeah, absolutely. Um, Joe and I have partnered together on something we are putting out there as uh, MVP Spotlight blog. And thanks to Joe for all the feedback and his thoughts on what you would like to see as content from MVPs, you know, who are on the Spotlight in, in the Microsoft blog. So that's been amazing. And even uh, Fabian and I have connected earlier on uh, false positive and false negative improvements that can be done on the MDO product side. So we are really taking all that feedback and uh, looking into, you know, designing the admin uh, submissions workflow. Also from a lot of MVPs that we work offline with, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, released uh, some features recently around the simplified quarantine uh, experiences, such as hourly notifications and uh, upcoming on our radar for future considerations are Uh, updates to MDO evaluation capabilities and uh, ways to evaluate impersonation protection and spoofing protection in an audit mode. And also a very popular one is uh, DMARC reports, which we've received tons of feedback on from MVPs and customers, which is amazing for us to prioritize and figure out what should be the design that customers want. And also looking into other features like MDO email remediation actions. So it's been a fantastic experience. So, and I think this is just one um, example. And then now think about all the other product groups that are working together with some of the same MVPs and other MVPs. So um, let's um, chat a little bit about... What would we recommend someone? Again, I, we heard already, like if someone is aiming for MV, becoming an MVP, don't do it. Just be, follow your passion. And, um, but what is it? Do we have something? I don't know if it's even disclosing secrets, which we shouldn't, but, um, something that we are looking for in a specific community, like a specific way. Is it more blogs? Do we need more um, podcasts? Do we need more what communities? Or is it really find a niche where you get a lot of people? Like, how would we recommend someone to start? Um, so essentially, wherever people need help. So it could be social media. It could be, uh, as I say, that kind of mailing list platform I mentioned earlier. It could be our, our forums where people are asking for help. Wherever you find people asking for help, that's a fantastic place to start. Uh, and wherever you can readily share information uh, to get the most impact. Essentially, the more you share, the more views or kind of collaboration you're seeing happen around the content you're sharing, the more you know you're doing the right thing and you know you're doing it in the right place. Um, so yeah, just get, get started. Uh, there's no barrier at all. And the kind of key tip I would always give you is, and I'm sure everyone in IT knows how this works. If you've spent the last four days trying to fix something and then you suddenly find that little tiny toggle switch or registry setting or whatever it might be that fixes it for you and makes it work perfectly, that's the exact thing you then need to be sharing with the community to save everyone else in the same position all that pain. Uh, but I'll pass over to Udra to see if she's got anything as well. Oh, my one recommendation is that even if the thought has crossed your mind once, don't wait, you know, take that first step, reach out to somebody uh, who you may know. And just, I feel like one thing may lead to another. And, you know, that's how you start spreading your knowledge within the community. Katie, do you have one tip Work with all your work But with your MVPs? Really, my quick tip is just lean into your passion. If you're passionate about it, you're passionate about mentoring, passionate about sharing, passionate about blogging, what so build on what Ben and Urza are saying, but 
lean into your passion and be yourself. That's really what it comes down to. Thank you. Joe, what is your one tip and trick or not tip for someone who would like to become an MVP? And my advice would be to follow your passions. You know, I, I love speaking and helping others and mentoring. And, and so for me, that just really comes easy and natural. You know, it doesn't feel like work. And so, you know, for others, they, they might love, let's say, starting a podcast or, uh, you know, perhaps producing uh, training content. And uh, so whatever it is you love doing and helping others, I would say follow that and just do that to the best of your ability. And, and you'll really enjoy yourself as you're going through this process. Thank you. Thank you. Fabian, do you have anything to add? I just want to add, if you have the chance, go to some local user groups, meet people in your area or virtual bigger areas and just get started. See what they need and how you can help out. Ben, do you have a summary for us? Yeah, so if you take one thing away from this, it's going to be to go to aka.ms slash MVP, where you'll find loads more information about the MVP program, including things like what it takes to be an MVP, the most current and up-to-date information we have. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So I think we covered a lot. Um, and if we forgot to answer any questions or if there's any questions later on in your mind, dear audience, go to aka.ms slash ninja show. And there is share your voice. You can also ask questions over there. And so with that, thank you, my um, guests for the show. Thank you so much. So we had Ben, we had Urja, we had Katie, we had Fabian, and we had Joe. Big audience. Um, thank you so much for taking the time, for preparing and for yes, answering all those questions. And I hope that we animated you out there to maybe start helping others and become a big part of our community. So again, thank you everyone on the show and thanks everyone for attending. This was season two of the Ninja Show and wait for season three coming hopefully soon. Bye bye.